I want to work with well, I want to work with everything that's as warm as it can be as close to the chocolate. So if this chocolate is 95, 97 degrees, I don't want to plunge, watch this. If I plunge this in here and take it out, you're going to see how fast this sets up. Not good. Not good. Too cold. This thing is, this is why this is so great. This thing is 65 degrees, way too cold, way too cold. Now, if I'm doing a test, it's great because I want to cool it. But I'm going to show you something here in a second that you, you, if you've worked with chocolate, you've all probably done this and say, why did, what happened? Why, why did this happen? Clusters. How many times have you made clusters? You made clusters before? Hey? Little nut clusters? Shaking her head over here. Okay, let's let's do uh, one of my favorites, pistachios. Temperature is important. If I and I'm going to do this. See how nice I can handle this paddle versus a spoon. All right, I'm making clusters, right? So I said, all right, I'm going to use my cup. So I pick up my cup. I want to do small, so I'm right away, I'm doing it right. I'm making a small batch, and I want to pour the pistachios in here. Okay, and then I want to get my spoon out. I'm looking for my spoon. I go get my spoon. I get spoon out, and I start stirring this up. And I start, okay, I'm getting ready, right? I'm getting ready. You notice that it's getting a little bit sticky. I don't know if you can see that. It's getting sticky already, right? What's happening is everything that I put in here was way, way, way too cold. By the time I get this out, this is going to be, I already can feel it, it's going to be a sticky mess, right? The nuts, they're room temperature, 66. My spoon, probably even colder, the metal even gets colder. 67, 66, yeah, see? Even if I use this plastic thing, which is hard because it, the light, uh, this goes through it, they're all room temperature. Not good, not good, not good. See, look, look, it gets glopping up on me already. Look at it. See, it's setting up, no good. What I want to do, is, where's my other cup? I want to warm it up. Now don't use the hair dryer from the bedroom, please. Not good. Buy one just to do this with, right? I want to warm this thing up. And don't use the cup that you, your favorite coffee cup, because your chocolate, unless you want to make chocolate that tastes like coffee, it'll probably, because of the oils, it'll taste like coffee. So I'm warming everything up. I'm even going to warm the product up. I want to warm this up. Only takes a couple of minutes. I don't have to worry about this. I don't have to worry about this. I want this cold. This is fine. Because it's going on the pan to get cool. Right? Would you do that for a real chocolate? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the secret. A lot of, you don't want to do clusters in a bowl like this unless you're really, really fast. Really fast. Because it's going to set up on you. And then the last third that you do, they're the ones that are going to be gloppy and they're the ones that are going to have the white streaks in them. So you want to go small and go quick. Small and quick. So now that I've warmed this up, now, look at that. Now, even though this is pretty warm. Now I can go into my cup. I generally put about a third, about a third in there. Try to keep it over your, wherever you're working so you don't make too big of a mess. Work kind of quickly. 
Throw in your nuts. And then you go to work. I like wax paper because I don't like cleaning. So I dip it on the wax paper. Now, there's all kinds of methods to this. This is the cleanest because my, I'm not touching these babies. I'm just spooning them out. Kind of trying to get the same amount. I'm kind of holding the paper down so it doesn't slide with the bottom of the cup. And you get your own techniques. I'm just going to put a few more nuts in here. But you can work pretty quick. Get a little more chocolate at the bottom, a little less nuts here. And generally you get, a, I get usually about a dozen out of a cup this size. Now, I have a freezer here. It's probably like, I don't know, it's cold. I'm gonna slide these babies in here. And I got lucky when I bought these trays, they fit right in there. Mm -hmm. The next size I bought up, they can't close the door. Coating needs to be shocked, cold. Freezer is good. Refrigerator works for the first couple trays you do, but then the refrigerator that started out at 48 degrees winds up being 55 degrees, 60 degrees. It, you know, open and close, open and close, no good. So with a freezer, even if you're open and closing, you're not going to lose that much for the coatings. It works really good. It works really good. Now, if you can see this bowl, now this has been off now. You can see it's starting to set up. You see it? And I, because I haven't been stirring it. It's starting to set up. So just scrape it down in there and it'll melt. So probably, I need to pump the heat back on again. Where's my, my favorite tool over here? Yeah, see? I knew it was. It's down under 95. It's starting to glop up on me. And you can usually tell by just looking at your bowl. Once your bowl starts setting around the edge, you know it's getting too cold. See, so now I can turn the heat back on. This one, still good. This one's still, this one's still over 100. Dark tends to cool slower than milk. Uh, again, it's part of the, the whole milk thing for some reason. So, and you want to stir, you don't want to whip, and the longer the handle the better, and you always want to do it paddle style like this, don't go like this, it's really bad on the wrist and bad on the, this way you're just kind of like, you're just mixing, you're really not stirring, you're just kind of folding it kind of in, love working with dark, look how beautiful dark stays, alright, look, that's set up. But look at this baby. You, you can't do anything with this. Now I can take this to the microwave and reheat it. I'll take the spoon out. But now I got this mess. See? And not good. Not good. So you want to avoid that by keeping everything warm. Now the professionals, they have warm cabinets where they keep their tools in. So when they go to get their stuff out, it's warm. The cups, their spoons, and their spatulas and everything. They're not because they're not constantly scraping and cleaning. Right? So they keep it warm. And they're also very good at cleaning your utensils off as they use them. The other utensil I don't have here is a wide knife spatula. Best friend of a candy maker is the hardware store. Any of those stainless tools there will work. Spatulas, you don't have to have a professional spatula, you know, wide one to use. This, I, I particularly like this kind of spatula versus is more like a cake spatula versus those spatulas. It just works better in my hands. I want to I want to put a little color in this pumpkin. So I, I'm not going to do any of the colors, but I want to add some color to this pumpkin. So all I'm going to do is kind of dress up a couple of these with some milk. So it'll be milk and dark. Just just as a just as an example of putting color in. Now, I am not 
I do the qualification in the beginning that I am not a candy maker. I am a salesman, but I've been doing this for 40 years and you kind of pick up little things by watching people. I didn't, I didn't develop any of this stuff. It's purely by watching people. Now, what I've done is I've, I've put milk chocolate in there because I want to make two different colors in this piece. So I want to let that set up just a little bit. Not too much, because if I let it set too much, it'll, it'll fall, it'll separate from the piece. So I want to let it just get a little bit crusty before I add the dark on top. So if I'm doing whites, pinks, blues, whatever it is, you want to let it set a little bit before you dump the rest of it on there. And that temperature will adhere to it, melt it back in, and it won't dissolve the piece. So no problem. Should be any air bubbles in that because I didn't put very much in, but it, I can always vibrate it a little bit. Just a couple of tiny air bubbles are coming out. I have professionals that have six, eight gals, and all day long, all they do is paint in these molds. Paint in the molds by hand, just paint, paint, paint. You know, and they'll pass them down, and somebody puts another color in, somebody puts another color in, and then somebody at the end finishes it off. Uh, pretty amazing, amazing stuff. There are, there are machines that actually do it now. If you buy an RM Palmer from Dan and Reddy and you do multiple colors, it's all done by machine. Little tiny nozzles, putting in the proper amount as the molds go by and these, you know, $500,000 pieces of equipment, it's amazing. Okay, stirring, checking all the time. Stirring, checking. Now we're getting up to come back up to 95. Slowly coming up, this one's probably still close to 100, yeah. Yeah, this one's still pretty pretty warm. Okay. It's starting to crust up a little bit. I don't know if you can see that or not. Here, pass it around. You'll see it. It's starting to just get a little dullness to it. You'll see. Still wet, but a little bit dull. So when I dump more chocolate on top of that, put it over here before I break my neck. Now, if I want to cool that a little bit faster, that's where the speed becomes in. I can just have this on as I'm working and cooling those pieces. Now I gotta be careful what I'm blowing here because this thing all blows stuff all over the place. But um, if I have a lot of stuff, if I have a lot of stuff, I want that to be a little bit more before I dump. If I have, um, you can't you can't really see that, but this is really because the air is on it. It's just going very quickly. So it's getting duller and duller. And it's just about ready. And again, if I don't have a freezer, refrigerator's good. If I don't have a refrigerator, at least get air on it if you're going to room drop and do it. That air will help. I think much better than the spoon. Look at that. I got lucky on that one, didn't I? Get rid of that excess. These inexpensive molds are a little difficult to work with in the sense that they're they're a little bit flimsy. You know, they have to be careful. I want to get the air bubbles out. You've seen this before. You know, you vibrate. Get those air bubbles out. I got that fan blowing over. This is helping me. Generally, I should have it probably blowing the other way, not towards here. Not bad on the air bubbles. Very fluid this dark was, so not too many air bubbles. The thicker the chocolate, the more air bubbles you're going to get. So I'm going to pop this baby in the freezer for a few minutes. Humidity dropped. Humidity dropped to 47. That's good. This is always good to work on, especially when you go to demold stuff, because you don't want something flimsy you're banging on, or when you're dropping the air bubbles out. This one's a little bit thin. Uh, years ago, uh, when I worked with my friend Elaine Gonzalez and, and uh, Donna Peters, Donna's done some demonstrations here. I used to get them for them at the uh, countertop marble manufacturers. When they punch the sinks out, they do this thing. So you say, hey, one side's already polished. You don't, you don't, you don't care about the bottom side, right? And they were real cheap. 
they're really cheap, and, and of course they're about an inch thick, so they got some. They're heavy. They got this one kind of slides around. This one needs. I need some nonstick pad on the bottom. But it's also cold, which is nice to work with. Yeah, can you work on the top? Yeah, you can. That's just a little more porous, but you can work on the top. 